Hello, I'm Dr. Corky Wilhite, and I'm going to take a minute to show you today about using a template. A lot of people call it a putty index or a matrix um, to build the lingual shelf. I call it the lingual layer. Some people call it the uh, palatal shelf. Uh, the first layer of the composite bonding. So once the uh, template is created, I'm going to make sure that it's trimmed so that the facial incisal line angle is right where the trimming happens. Trimming this very exactly is really important because if I've got a little excess and there's a little lip of material over onto the facial, then when I place my composite in there, I'm more likely to trap air bubbles. If I over trim it and take a little too much away, then my incisal edge won't be the proper thickness. So you trim the template, Carefully, usually that's done on the, the model or the wax up. And then we're trying this back in the mouth before I load the template. So when I, when I check here, sometimes what I'll do is actually score the lingual of the template just a little bit with a light mark so I can tell where that lingual margin is. I think you can see that little line that I just created. So. Once we've tried in the template and I've scored the lingual there and I, I know how much to load, um, I'll show you how to load the template. So we're going to use microhybrid. The Renamel microhybrid is my absolute favorite material. And I'll extrude a little bit out of it first. And I like to dispense it so that it just spreads out. You don't want to end up with a little snaky pile of this stuff. So you want to just slowly extrude it so that you're not getting a as many possibilities of trapping air bubbles. And if I was doing multiple teeth, I would just go across all the, the several teeth and end up uh, adapting it as I'm doing right now. This is using the Cosmonet multi-use instrument, which is also one of my two absolute favorite instruments. And you can see how I'm just sort of cleaving away a little excess material here. making sure that the base where it is going to adapt to the lingual of the tooth is pretty smooth. I don't want this to be a big ledge here. I don't want to be trapping air bubbles there either. So I want that to be pretty smooth. If you look at it from a profile view, I think you can tell that it's not bulked out a tremendous amount. This is fairly, um, it's not thin at this point, but it's not real bulky. Another nice thing that uh, really works well with this microhybrid is that it adapts so well. The, the lower viscosity compared to um, a lot of materials provides a really better uh, option for getting it to adapt. So um, when I'm seeding this, what I want to do is watch on the lingual margin. So as I seed it, I can see it touch the lingual margin. If I can tell I'm a little short, then I can lift it back up a little bit before I seat it all the way. And then once I get it in position, then I want to get rid of that cleavage, which is what I call this little valley in there. I want to blend that into the tooth structure. And again, this lower viscosity is super nice for allowing that to adapt really well. You're going to hear me, hear me say that over and over. The adaptability of this material is just fantastic. That lower viscosity makes it a little bit problematic if you're going to try to build up a tooth a registration like this in free uh, space. If you don't have something supported, it, it does have a tendency to slump. But in a uh, template like this, it's really perfect. Now what I'll do is demonstrate how I make this layer the proper thickness, which should be quite thin. So now that it's adapted to the tooth, I'm going to push in on the, uh, from, you know, from the facial here. And I'm trying to make this layer thin, but not paper thin. I don't want it so thin that would easily break if I accidentally bumped my instrument into it later. So I'm just going to kind of push it back. Again, I can cleave off a little excess quite easily. So that if this were upside down, it would almost look like 
Um, in a cross section, it would look like the shape of the letter L. So it's thin, but not paper thin. This is one of the biggest issues when we do hands-on courses, which uh, we love doing those at Cosmonet Center for Aesthetic Excellence. But um, the most common mistake, or one of the most common mistakes, is that people have a tendency to leave uh, too much thickness of material here, and so there's not enough room for the other layers to create that really natural, beautiful, incisal translucency. I'm also eliminating as much composite as I can just right at the proximal. I don't want this lingual layer to form the proximal surface. So it uh, might be tempting to leave some of this material in place to, to think that you'll save time if you form the proximal surface now, but it's really important to eliminate any material in those proximal areas so it's really thin at that point so that the proximal surface will be formed uh, when you do the final layer, which is the facial enamel layer. And that's going to be a lot more difficult if there's a bulk of material in the proximal at this point. And, th and then when you cure the material, because some of this might be curing through the tooth, in this case we're not behind the lingual surface, but sometimes we are. So that would be a time when you'd want to double the amount of curing time, whatever your light takes to cure it enough to set it, not necessarily to fully cure it, but to set it. Just double that when you do the template. So the first thing I like to do when I take the template away is to check the lingual just to be sure that this is set because sometimes this area doesn't set and when I take the template off it'll the uncured material will lift away so I'd want to blend that in before I cured the lingual. So the cross section of this would look like the letter L where the composite is so I've got plenty of room to add my other layers uh, for the incisal translucency, lobe formation, color blending but I'm fully formed on the lingual and on the incisal.